Hello, my name is Sofia Paoli and I work for Politecnico di Milano as a researcher. My field of expertise is urban planning, focusing on urban forestry, urban sustainability and resilience, urban policy strategies and nature-based solutions. The learning objective for this lecture is to understand the different indicators targeted by cities for urban forestry projects. We are going to explore different case studies, visiting different cities and looking at how urban forest indicators and goals are chosen differently accordingly to the specific context, taking into consideration climate, topography, nature, urban density, etc. The first city I want to talk about is Melbourne, Australia that has an urban forestry strategy since 2012 that targets 2032. The will of the strategy is to design and plant the forest of the future in a way that respects Melbourne's unique character, responds to climate change and urban expansion, and underpins the health, livability and well-being of the city and its inhabitants. Melbourne Future Urban Forest is building upon the present and the past, as the city is renowned for its historical parks, gardens and boulevards. In order to best manage existing vegetation and to guide the development of the forest of the future, they have undertaken extensive mapping of tree health, species composition, canopy cover, life expectancy for the trees now managed by the city of Melbourne. This mapping provides key indicators with which to benchmark the forest, set future targets and measure change over time. Melbourne City and Urban Forests in 2012 had several challenges to target. For example, low tree species diversity. Just three species made up more than 35% of Melbourne's trees. The aging of the trees. Some of the trees are near to the end of their lives. And trees with high vulnerability to pests and diseases. For example, myrtle rust disease could affect up to 45% of the city trees, increasing population and density and increasing urban heat island. In response to that, Melbourne's strategy aimed to adapt the city to climate change, mitigate the urban heat island effect by bringing inner city temperatures down, create healthier ecosystems, become a water sensitive city, engage and involve the community, and informing and consulting with the community. The City of Melbourne will achieve this by increasing canopy cover from 22% to 40% by 2040, increasing forest diversity with no more than 5% of one tree species, no more than 10% of one genus and no more than 20% of any one family, improving vegetation health, improving soil moisture and improving biodiversity. The second city is Madrid in Spain, that in 2015 released a series of guidelines called Madrid Plus Natural to tackle the global concern of climate change through multiple local solutions. The municipality has developed a vision based on innovation and urban regeneration through solution based on nature. With this goal, 16 solutions with a potential lift for applicability have been identified, applicable within the city through small urban acupuncture interventions. The vision aims to create a system of solutions at the urban scale, a well-developed blue and green infrastructure linking public space, parks, natural areas and buildings with green roofs and facades, contributing overall to the city's resilience against climate change. The targets are the use of nature-based solutions as strategy for adapting to climate change, increase of green roofs for public buildings, increase of green facades in dense areas of the city, adaptation to climate change through the reactivation and implementation of public green spaces, increase of permeable surfaces. Some of the 16 solutions are, for example, green walls. Given the strong growth and densification of the city, green facades become important to ensure greening for neighborhoods and homes. Walls and facades, once renaturalized, will help improve air quality and absorb part of the noise pollution protecting the building structures from thermal shock and mitigating the impact of the most serious weather events. Maintenance and management remain issues of great importance, combined with a careful selection of plant species for planting. Another example is greening infrastructures. Existing road infrastructures, such as motorways, can be converted into linear parks, creating new green areas for the city and its inhabitants. The strategy can also be implemented within urban voids or abandoned and obsolete connections, improving air quality and mitigating the pollution that traffic produces. 
A third example is the retrofitting of the equipamientos. Areas of social infrastructure, known as equipamientos, are often left unused and derelict due to demographic change and physical decay. Greening these pockets of land in close consultation with the local communities can reinvigorate neighborhoods by enabling social interaction, improving well-being and enhancing wildlife prosperity. Low maintenance greening techniques and the involvement of local residents can help overcome maintenance challenges while strengthening a sense of ownership. The third city is London in UK that in July 2015 proposed the creation of a Greater London National Park City through a partnership and the establishment of a communication and support team and a National Park City Charter. The targets of the project are to create a National Park City, to increase tree canopy cover in the city of 5% by 2025, to establish a partnership with all stakeholders, citizens, local authorities and organizations with the aim of sharing, financing and raising awareness, to establish a communication and support team. The communication will have both a physical output on the territory, with the spaces pop up, permanent or mobile awareness raising or digital with an online platform. To promote and manage a capital fund, to finance projects and initiatives in line with the project, and the creation of a National City Park Foundation, a charity that aims to lead, coordinate and develop vision to galvanize the movement and to create campaigns and fundraising, to support other cities that want to take the same path. The creation of a National Park City Charter that all citizens, as well as the municipalities and districts, will be able to sign and to share. The Charter is also addressed to the leaders of cities around the world, establishing a vision and guidelines to allow other cities to follow the example of London. Let's now see the City of Paris. The Municipality of Paris, in 2014, has decided to take some actions to reach 100 hectares of green walls and green roofs by 2020 on the municipal heritage. Each new building must have a green wall or roof, at least 300 existing municipal structures, such as schools, kindergartens, sports facilities, libraries, etc., will have a green wall or green roof. And green walls located in the public space. The city also supports the greening of private buildings with a technical support for revegetation, so technical guidelines and training of consultants will be available. A continuous evolution of the local urbanist plan the creation of a permit to revegetate, a permis de végétaliser, which allows Parisians to conduct private initiatives on public space, and the creation of the végétalisant.paris web platform. The targets of the projects are the creation of 100 hectares of green walls and green roof, the vegetation of 200 points identified by the Parisians as parts of the Douvert près de chez moi operation, the opening to the public of 30 hectares of gardens, the restoration of parks and gardens, the planting of 20,000 new trees, the development of educational farms and shared gardens, the creation of orchards and vegetable gardens in school, the creation of 30 hectares dedicated to urban agriculture, the creation of Rue Végétale, uh, the creation of Permis de Végétaliser, the launch of calls for Pariculture project and the creation of the device Un Arbre dans mon Jardin and also the creation of apiaries in the city. Medellin was experiencing a severe urban heat island effect as a result of 50 years of rapid urban development. To address this phenomenon, the city implemented a three-year green corridor program from 2016 to 2019, significantly shifting its urban design paradigm. As part of the program, 75 locals from disadvantaged backgrounds were trained to be city gardeners and planting technicians for the over 30 corridors as part of their full-time work. The implementation of the 36 city-wide green corridors has provided a range of benefits for the citizens of Medellin. Green corridors can reduce the air and surface temperature of the surrounding area through evapotranspiration and providing shade, reducing the health risks of the citizens of Medellin from extreme heat. 
Not only has it improved the local urban environment by reducing the exposure to extreme heat, but it has also positively impacted citizens' daily lives by improving interconnectedness and mobility and increasing biodiversity. The Green Corridors project demonstrates how integrated nature-based policies like widespread urban tree planting can have a far-reaching impact on the local and global environment, as well as significantly improving citizens' lives and well-being. As a conclusion, as you may know, for the first time in human history, over half of the world's population lives in cities. By 2050, two-thirds of all humanity will be living in urban areas. Cities are responsible for an estimated 75% of all carbon dioxide emissions globally and are particularly vulnerable to climate change. Thus, we can say that cities are the first cause of climate change as well as the first victims. For this reason, it is urgent and necessary to implement nature-based solutions in cities as they are a cost-effective, accessible and scalable effort to simultaneously reduce carbon footprint of cities and increase their resilience against climate-related hazards. Urban and periurban trees and forests are one of such solutions.